So is the cloud more or less secure than traditional on-premise systems? The answer may surprise you. Hey guys, welcome back to the Cloud Insider YouTube channel. I'm your host, David Linthicum, I'm author, speaker, Be Less Geek. And we're here to discuss the truth around cloud computing, the actuality behind this technology, what works, what doesn't, and getting beyond the hype into how enterprises are able to leverage this technology effectively. Well, fresh back from the RSA conference, uh, which was held in San Francisco, uh, it's basically the Woodstock for computer security companies, and it was overwhelming the number of companies that are there, and certainly Everything is back up and running from the pandemic. The conferences are back in full swing. The city was full. And it was a lot to be seen on the expo floor of the RSA conference. I also did some coverage with the Cube uh, organization I'm partnering with. And please take a look at that coverage. I linked it in the description below. So one of the most common questions that I get out there around security is, is cloud computing more secure than on-premises? Or is on-premises more secure than cloud computing. And obviously the answer is gonna be a complex array of things that are gonna be dependent on your particular situation. But I am, am seeing some misinformation out there that probably needs to be addressed. So what happens now in the tech press and also the business press in general is they'll announce the fact that some bank or some financial institution or some government institution is moving some of their systems over to a public cloud provider and that security is going to be a major concern in doing that. And I understand why they're saying that. I understand the perception is that cloud-based systems are normally going to be less secure than on-premises, but that's really kind of not the case. Also keep in mind, I'm not an apologist for the public cloud providers. Obviously I posted the video, I'll link, link it below and here up above, about kicking, uh, kicking cloud providers to the curb, which is probably at a half a million views at this time went viral. However, I do think we need to take an honest look at all the technology on a case-by-case -case basis, and security being one that seems to be getting a bit of a bad rap out there that probably shouldn't be getting a bad rap. In other words, cloud computing is typically going to be more secure than the on-premise systems. Let's talk about that. So now I know what you're thinking, uh, how can it be more secure if these are systems that we don't have a physical ownership of, we can't go touch them. Uh, you know, therefore, if we're putting our data, uh, which are the crown jewels in many instances for businesses, then the concern would be that our data is gonna be less protected than if we put it into our private data center. And I understand why people think that way. It's, it's logical to think that if I have less control, I'm gonna have less security. But in the case of public cloud providers, and security, that doesn't seem to be the case. So why is that? Well, first and foremost reason is that cloud technology has been the focus of innovation and R&D efforts uh, probably for the last 15 years. So everybody saw the cloud as being the place to put your security tools and technology. And so the security tool providers and certainly the cloud providers have been spending lots of money in making those tools more viable and more effective uh, than the other tools that they may be making for some of the on-premises systems. In fact, uh, my on-premises clients are often complaining that they feel they're not getting as much of the innovation love and the updates in terms of security uh, technology that they should be getting from their security providers. And that's probably the case. Probably 80% of the R&D out there is being spent on building security systems on public cloud providers. And so in doing that, we're obviously gonna have better technology, better mechanisms on the public cloud providers than we we're going to have on premise, on premises, excuse me. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. So even though we're putting something in the public clouds and the perception is that it's gonna be less secure, the fact of the matter is, is, is that the mechanisms are gonna be far more innovative and far more mature than many of the mechanisms we're gonna find uh, with the uh, systems that we're building, uh, building within our data centers. And I understand it seems counterintuitive, but that's the case right now. So keep that in mind as you look at this technology, take an objective look at all of it. Also your mileage of course is gonna vary depending on your particular situation. Look at your workload, look at your data set and look at the security mechanisms that are available out there, the ones that are in the cloud and the ones that are uh, in the data center and look at the ones that are gonna be the best fit for your particular use case. And that's, that's the bottom line of all of this. But generally speaking, we're going to find better security mechanisms in, on public cloud providers than we're going to find on premises. That's just the reality of it. So 
The next strength of leveraging uh, security on public cloud providers is the fact the matter is they have regular updates and patches and are automatically handled by the service provider. So we have centralized distribution of technology. If we're using cloud providers and using security systems on those cloud providers, we're always going to get the best of breed, the the latest version of that security technology. So we don't have to download updates and patches uh, to our systems within our data centers. And so the cloud providers and the cloud security providers are able to to, uh, to take that on. So it happens in kind of an automatic way, and which makes things more secure because people have a tendency to uh, miss doing those updates, neglect them, uh, and they can get in trouble if some sort of an attack vector emerges where those updates were created to take care of that attack vector, but they haven't been updated with the, data, the systems in the data center, yet it happens automatically with the systems in the cloud. Also keep in mind that most security breaches are related to pe- mistakes that people make, uh, and whether that's on premises or in the cloud. And if you look at the big breaches that have cur- occurred on major cloud providers, uh, they've been traced back to misconfigurations. In other words, someone didn't understand how to set up the security properly on that particular public cloud provider with that particular security mechanism. They left something exposed, like like a, a S3 bucket exposed, something like that and it was breached. Um, Obviously, it's difficult to blame the security providers uh, and certainly the cloud providers for that because you can, uh, if you don't have the right talent, you don't have the right administration talent, the right security operations talent around to drive these things, you're going to be running the risk. So the, the biggest threat out there is not that the technology is going to fail you. The security technology, whether it's in the cloud or on premises, is going to be perfectly fine if it's configured properly. So your ability and your need to put the right skill sets around those security solutions is really going to be the larger determinant as to whether or not your security solution is going to be effective or not. Keep that in mind. So another advantage of leveraging cloud-based security features is the availability of AI technology. Obviously, we have AI that runs on premises and runs in the cloud, but typically the AI systems that run in the cloud, certainly the ones that are uh, leveraged with security systems, are going to be more effective doing things like predictive analytics, the ability to spot um, attacks that are occurring based on behaviors of all the infrastructure. In other words, you're saturating compute, saturating storage, and they're able to determine through some predictive uh, analytics that run through their AI systems and their security mechanisms that that's normally going to be something that's going to indicate an attack and then take corrective action. So. You're normally going to have better AI tools that exist in the cloud. At least you do now. They're going to work and play well with security systems. And so you're able to leverage that advantage of mixing AI with your security mechanisms more so in the cloud than you are in your on-premises systems. So what are some, what are some of the advantages of on-premises security? Well, normally it's greater visibility and control over physical and network resources. And that's the primary reason that we would leverage it. In other words, we're not going to get that same advantage in leveraging cloud because we're leveraging these resources on demand. And so we're leveraging you know, virtual network resources and, and uh, certainly hardware resources, storage, compute, things like that which are going to be virtualized. In other words, we're just you know leveraging a concept which is actually uh, uh, making use of the physical assets in the back end. So we're not going to have this, this, this relationship with that resource, with that equipment, where we can you know, picture the physical server that we're leveraging because we don't own the physical server. We're just renting the physical server. And so many people consider that as an advantage in dealing with security systems, certainly having uh, better control over the networking, better control over the servers. And I think that's perfectly fine to consider. Uh, as we start um, getting more advanced around this stuff and things are virtualized, uh, I don't think it matters much whether you're securing something on premises or securing something in the cloud. You're still dealing with resources that are going to be abstracted from you, uh, whether you own them or not. And so, therefore, we're kind of you know looking at uh, you know apples and apples, so to speak, uh, and looking at the differences between the security mechanisms that support on premises and the ones that support public cloud providers. Another advantage of the on-premises security stuff was customization of security protocols that fit specific organizational needs uh, without external dependencies. In other words, we're not, we're not being dependent on some remote system that exists in the cloud or a SaaS provider in leveraging these mechanisms. So they can largely operate independent of any outside resource. 
And in some cases, that's going to be a security advantage for enterprises because if that outsource res- if that outside resource uh, fails to run or we have some sort of a network outage situation, we don't have that dependency, which is going to cause weaknesses to our existing security uh, platform that exists on premises. And so some people consider that an advantage, and it probably is an advantage in some cases. So looking at some of the... Uh, use cases out there in case studies. Normally people are building net new workloads. Obviously a lot of generative AI development is going on now, and that's going to be, you know, generative AI tool sets uh, that are allow you to build LLMs and data to support uh, the, those, those knowledge models and the ability to protect those data, protect that data, protect those knowledge models and protect those inference engines. And so We're looking at the choices that we have out there and how we're going to secure something like that. Now, in considering the on-premises system, it's going to have the advantages that we just talked about. In other words, we have complete control over the physical hardware, and so we may have some security advantages that come along for that. However, as I mentioned earlier, we're we're dealing with all these things through virtualization systems, whether it's in the cloud or on-premises. And so even though you do have physical control over that asset, you're going to be dealing with it much like you deal with your cloud computing assets. Uh, Another advantage would be looking at the mechanisms themselves. In other words, who's got the best security mechanisms that are going to provide us with the best security we possibly can get? In that case, the... uh, uh, the advantage goes to the public cloud providers for the for the thing we just talked about, uh, you know, five minutes ago. Uh, they spend more money. They're doing more research. It's more innovation that's occurring in the cloud, whether it's the cloud providers themselves or the third party security providers that are building uh, security systems for the public cloud providers. That's just the way it is, and that's why if you look at some of the more innovative uses of security, and certainly the uh, the use of AI within these security systems. Uh, advantage goes to cloud because we're able to leverage AI more effectively. We have better ecosystems out there, better toolkits out there and how to build and deploy these systems. They're just more out there because that's where the money's being spent than when considering some of the on-premises uh, options that we have as well. And of course, this doesn't mean that you should always deploy your systems in the cloud. By no means that's the case. Cloud can be expensive. It can cause lock-in, cause lots of things that make it not necessarily the advantage for you. Just consider the trade-offs with the security mechanisms that have uh, possible use with your application workloads, either existing workloads that are migrated someplace or some sort of a net new application that we're building, like a generative AI system. So we have to make all of these decisions based on the specific use cases that we're dealing with, specific applications, the specific data work, uh, data, uh, data sets that we're securing and considering compliance issues and governance issues and all these things kind of come into play. So it's never going to be, we're only gonna deploy uh, assets in the cloud because we view that have, view them as having better security, or we're always going to deploy assets on premises because we view that as being more secure for our particular situation. You have to take a look at the specific thing that you're securing. What what's the data? You know what's the use? What's the purpose? What are the compliance issues? Uh, privacy issues? All these sorts of things kind of come to play, and so that's where you get into the whole architecture concept where you have to figure out. Uh, the how your requirements back into a particular technology set, you know, databases, application development systems, things like that, and also security. And so you're never going to make a decision where you're going to use one security, one, one security system, whether it's in the cloud or on premises, for all application workloads you're going to deploy. It's going to be taken on a case-by-case basis. And that's the only way you're going to win this war. If you take a look at each of the unique needs of the particular workload you're dealing with, and match the appropriate security mechanism or mechanisms normally. There's lots of, uh, uh, there's normally an amalgamation of different systems that come together, and that's gonna be the best solution. And so it's never gonna be one platform on premises or or, uh, the cloud, or one particular security mechanism, or one particular cloud brand, AWS, Microsoft, or Google. It's going to be best of breed security technologies that is completely dependent on your use case, completely dependent on your architecture. So there's no simple answers here. Uh, And so you have to go through a good architectural process to make sure you're leveraging the correct security for what you're looking to do. And there's no shortcuts in doing that. It's understanding your own requirements, then looking at the different security solutions that are out there and backing the appropriate solution uh, into your architecture. Easy as that. 
Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to uh, check out my blog on InfoWorld. Also, check out my new course on uh, AI architecture uh, out on GoCloud Careers. Uh, it's filling up fast, and uh, I'm spending four hours a week interacting with the students. They're absolutely loving it. You Join us over there uh, anytime you want. We're learning about how to build and deploy generative AI systems and how to do it right the first time, which is, also, which is very important. Also... Don't forget to check out my book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing, and check out my other assets out there. And also look me up on LinkedIn and look me up on Twitter. I'd love to add you as a connection out there as well. So until next time, best of luck with your cloud computing solutions. You guys be safe.